Okay there guys, welcome to some uh, Black and White Invitational Week 3 uh, analysis. Um, my name's Peng, I'm a long-time British Black and White player, I've been around since day one, uh, with some breaks in between, um, but not really a commentary expert, so um, yeah, hopefully this goes fine, but I'm not as charming as Finchinator or Monai and Mad Dog who have uh, commentated the first few rounds. So I've picked a few highlight games from, um, from this round. So. Um, week three is basically like an elimination week, so it's uh, week three is only players who have already lost a set, and this is a double elimination tournament, so if you lose two sets, you're out. These games are must win for all these players. Um, the first game that I've picked is between kind of like an established black and white player called Finnick O'Dare, he used to go by the name of Sensei Axew, uh, potentially the worst smoke on name change in history, but um, we go on. I'm going to call him Axew almost definitely in this video, but really should be calling him Finnick O'Dare, um, as awful as that feels. Um, and uh, so he's a more established player, he's played SPL for the last couple of years, and he's running this interesting Hale team that I'll talk to in a second. Um, up against Wait Two Seconds, who is uh, an up-and-coming player, um, potentially on the fringes of getting drafted for SPL this year maybe, had a good, um, uh, a good year for like tournament results and like side tournaments, and, like the smaller team tournaments. Shun some really good stuff, brings smart teams, um, and just seems to get the game pretty well. So, uh, way two seconds is bringing in this very classic looking black and white OE Sand team. So, this is kind of how Sand offense has looked in the tier since day one. Um, the sets have changed, certain bands have affected the viability of certain things. Um, but, like, you could run out basically this six in 2011 maybe Amoongus didn't have Regenerator back then but you could run out a very similar six in 2011 and it would have been like incredibly strong people were using it um and you can run it today as well and it's also like still pretty damn good so um the idea is that um the like the offensive pairing of Landorus, Excadrill and Terrakion is like really really potent um and they're also all sand immune um and they kind of each benefit from sand in their own little ways um Trachyon and, and Excadrill do directly with boosts to their special defense and, um, and uh, attacks respectively because Drill has to run um, Sand Force in this generation. Um, so these three are paired with uh, Trachyon, uh, sorry, Tranitar, and they're basically just like wall break for, for each other. Um, so like something like a Gliscor is like really hard pressed to beat both Excadrill and Trachyon in the same game. Um, that's kind of how that's meant to work. Um, and then this team is rounded out by two like really solid water resists because in addition to like sand teams really good in black and white the other side of that coin is obviously like rain offense which you have to defensively cover too you can't just run out like six sandstorm immunities and be like really happy about it um so you have slow and amoongus here which kind of fulfill that defensive niche of um of being like sturdy water checks regenerator also massively helps um but yeah this team really classic um, constantly kind of reinvents itself, will always be relevant in, in the tier. Um, nothing massively groundbreaking here. Now, the team from Finnick O'Dare, however, very different. Um, this is something that you wouldn't have seen back in 2011, firstly because, you know, Kieran Black wasn't there, but um, also because, like, people just weren't using offensive hail back then. And if they were, they were doing, like, things that we know are now gimmicky. They were doing, like, blizzard spam with, like, loads of ice types, or they were doing... Um, spamming like loads of like overcoat pokemon or they're using like wall rain or, like other garbage like this things that like borderline really aren't viable right um but what we found in the last couple years is that a bomber snow on offense even if you're not clicking blizzards um even if the rest of your team isn't hail immune can be like really really potent and there's a couple reasons for that the first thing is that a bomber snow alone is just a really potent offensive wall breaker um ice and grass as a stab combination is like really hard to switch into in this tier because um the majority of steel types in the tier um aren't ice resistant so excadrill skarmory ferrothorn i like the big three all of those are neutral to ice which makes uh, ice and grass like really hard to switch into um it's, it can then back that up with like a bunch of like cool coverage uh, coverage options like um Pin Power Fire and Earthquake and Focus Punch and stuff. So it's got this really, really good, like, offensive toolkit, um, as well as Ice Shard for, like, utility in, in a meta game where, like, offensive dragons are really, really good. A Bomb of Snow is just, like, really damn cool on offense. Um, the second thing about Bomb of Snow is obviously bringing the hail, but it's used in, like, a much more nuanced way than, like, the Blizzard spam teams were. So 
The idea behind using a bomb snow on offense is basically that defensive teams love their leftovers and um, a lot of like defensive ground types and steel types because they're sandstorm immune they're so used to having like a uh, longevity advantage over um, the opponent so something like um, Dragonite against steel types or Dragonite against Landorus T in sand that's always shifted in favor of like the defensive war um, but playing under hail is very different because now both Pokemon take chip um, and that massively uh, kind of turns the tables and how the counterplay works. So um, with Hail, Steel types can't recover. That plays into the hands of physical dragons. So the way this team sort of plays is almost like an old-fashioned drag mag, but get rid of Magnazone, put Hail in instead, and that's the way you punch Steel types. That's kind of like the big new way that um, offensive dragons are getting played in this tier, and it's really, really cool to see, and this is a really exciting bring from Finnegan there. So with that said, let's just get straight into this game. So what we see is uh, both players leading the very classic turn one handshake, which is you do Stealth Rock, I do Stealth Rock. Um, we see the Garchomp being Sword Stance here. It could technically also be like a mixed lead with Draco Meteor, uh, which would have been like really, really strong into a team uh, with physically defensive Slowbro. Sword Stance has a bit more trouble, especially when it's intimidated. So it's forced to switch out of the Slowbro. Going into the Obama Snow, the big breaker of the team, which has an amazing matchup into all of these, uh, you know, ice and, and grass weeks. Big click of uh, Blizzard or Woodhammer is going to do tons of damage, but unfortunately takes an ice beam crit on entry. And immediately, Finnegan Dare having to rethink the game plan. He can't use Wall Break or Bomber Snow in the same way. Um, so what he does here is he chooses to to switch out, maybe save his Woodhammer big click for uh, for later, knowing he's going to self KO. Goes into the Jirachi, um, and Jirachis on these teams tend to be Choice Scarf with the like U-turn and Trick. Chooses to get rid of the uh, the Choice Scarf here, put on the Amoongus, which is a bit of a weird choice. Um, uh, the reason for that being that uh, Amoongus runs Black Sludge, not Leftovers, so getting Black Sludge on your Steel type, in addition to Hail, when it's your only Rock Resist against a team with Terrakion, all of those things, you know, kind of not ideal. Um, I'm kind of assuming he tried to catch the uh, the Slowbro or the Landorus T, maybe thinking that, um, wait two seconds, would guess he was more like a mixed set or like some kind of other offensive set. Um, but he is Scarf, tricks away the Scarf, and ends up not working out. Something has to be mentioned also is that Amoongus tends to match up pretty well on some of these teams because um, unlike Thunder Wave, which there are like type immunities for, you know, Garchomp's Thunder Wave immune, um, you don't get Stun Spore immunities in black and white. You have to literally run uh, Lumberry, and these hail teams often can't afford Lumberry because their dragons want to run leftovers so that they can keep up with like the uh, the, the, the steals um, uh, in the recovery game. Um, so kind of knowing that this stun spore from Mugus is pretty free, and all of a sudden now the game is actually looking really dire for Finnico Dare. He's basically lost his Bomber Snow, and his only rock resist is now paralyzed, and got Black Sludge, and taking hail chip. Things looking pretty bad. So he clicks the U-turn here as the drill comes in. Um, and another, another innovation we've seen on uh, Black and White Hyper Offense is the addition of Air Balloon Starmie, which uh, fears basically nothing from drill. So comes in on the drill here. Uh, the drill reveals Protect um, to kind of like scout the move, maybe burn a Hydro Pump PP. That could be relevant later. Um, but he, he just reveals Spin instead. Um, it's forced to switch out in case of the Hydro, uh, but I think really any sane person does, does Spin there. Uh, and then a bit of a weird turn here where the Amoogus is Choice Locked. Um, Finnick Dare can't really risk anything getting a, a stun spore on this turn, so it has to just kind of scout and see what's going to happen. Um, and wait two seconds, chooses to go for the Sludge Bomb here. Um, so the Starmie does live, but um, he's going to have to switch it out now, go into the Jirachi, obviously immune. Um, wait two seconds is really quite far ahead, so just happy to, to let this all happen. And these next few turns are absolute stingers for Finnick Dare. So we know this is U turn Pivot Jirachi. He just wants to get in, get out, get his breaker in, and we see two back-to-back -back full paralysis here. Inhale with Black Sludge. That Jirachi's lost 50% HP for absolutely no gain and just gets taken down by the Amoongus. So luck is definitely going against Finnecodera in this game, but he still has chances. You know, Kieran Black, every time it comes in, takes a kill. But in response, this Terrakion, now the um, uh, Jirachi is down, gets a kill in return. So it's going to become, going to become a bit of a sack war here, um, tracking up against Kieran Black. 
Um, kind of the last Pokemon that uh, Finnick Odair has that can really take on the... I'm um, sorry, I'm an idiot. I've been saying that Jirachi is the only rock resist all game. He's got a Garchomp. Think, Peg. He goes into Garchomp here. Um, and this is probably expecting that this is going to be a Choice Scarf Terrakion rather than Choice Band. Uh, looking at the team composition, if this was a Choice Band Terrakion, um, this team is, like, really, really slow. Um, and so knowing it's Choice Scarf, he goes into the Garchomp knowing that uh, um, it, it can take one Scarf close combat. Um, and if it's Choice Band, then he probably just loses on the spot regardless. Um... So we see the Terrakion switch out um, as wait, see, wait two seconds goes into the Lander ST, but at this point the Garchomp's kind of pinned. Um, it can take one kill, so it'll Sword Stance here and take down the Lander ST, but as soon as the Outrage locks to get rid of the Lando, that Slowbro is always waiting for it, and then it really is kind of Terrakion cleanup time. So this Garchomp got pretty well pinned by the Lander ST and, uh, and Slowbro combination. Um, as you can see here, the Slowbro just takes it down with, with the Ice Beam. So the Slowbro is a bit weak. It's going to take some Regenerator... Um, when it switches out, it's about to switch back in again. But the only really scary threat that Finnick uh, has left now is going to be um, the Dragonite. The Starmie is quite weak. Um, it's not got enough turns left in Sandstorm to, to really kill everything left. Um, so it's kind of like, it's based on like a Dragonite win condition, but you need some luck. And what we see here is um, that luck just never really comes. So the Kieran Black's getting KOs as soon as it comes in, but um, wait two seconds does have that Pokemon advantage. Um, and you can see that the Excadrill is able to actually just protect and just let the Stami uh, go down. The Dragonite comes in. He needs a bit of luck. He probably needs to get two Dragon Dancers um, in order to firstly break through the Slowbro, secondly to outspeed the Terrakion. Unfortunately, what we see is, um, yeah, flinch on this first Iron Head takes away any chance that he had. We see it is actually Leftovers Dragonite, like I kind of mentioned a bit earlier. Um, on these hail teams, you kind of want lefties D Knight because you're setting your own weather. Um, you don't want to be like just your win conditions just dying each turn themselves, so it's leftovers. That would have been really, really nice in this late game if you got that first Dragon Dance off because um, he would have been taken down to, what, 75%. Next, Ironhead would have done 50. He could have got to plus 2, and then he's got the Fire Punch. Then you can just Outrage to win the game. Um, so he had he had chances here to win out... Um, that, that that Iron Head flinch was was a real killer, though. What we see here is um, just wait two seconds. It's gonna, just going to play the game out. Um, this plus one Dragonite is, uh, yeah, not quite able to uh, to win the game here. Um, so what we see here is uh, a potential option that wait two seconds could have gone down is just to go straight to his Terrakion and Stone Edge because it's going to be faster than a plus one Dragonite. I'm assuming it's Scarf and not Choice Band anyway. Um... But he kind of knows that if he misses the Stone Edge or misses the Rock Slide, then the game is actually over. So the safer route is to go into the Slowbro. Um, the Dragonite could crit it, but the odds of a critical hit are lower than that of a uh, Rock Slide miss. So he's pretty happy to, to, to take this trade instead, uh, knowing that Kieran Black is Choice Banded and his Terrakion just always revenge kills. So he takes the safe route out in the end. Um, so even though Wait Two Seconds got pretty lucky in this game with you know the Iron Head Flinch, with uh, the Crit and Obama Snow, with those couple full paralysis. Um, he does still show he's got really good game awareness in the end to not risk Stone Edge misses um, when he doesn't need to, not even like uh, risk a Rock Slide miss. Scarf Terrakion tends to run two Rock Stabs purely for like the accuracy concern. And he sees he's got like a slightly um, more straightforward win con uh, through Slowbro instead, and then chooses to go for that. So. Well played, well played by wait two seconds. This wasn't the cleanest game in the end, but I do think this is like a really cool example of the ways that black and white offense are still getting innovated. If you were to tell people back in 2011 that you'd see like a bomber snow on hyper offense with no blizzard users, you'd think that was like absolutely insane. People back then were like, nah, you have to use like Runiclus and Conkledur, like Hail Balance um, and Jellison and Skarmory and stuff on stall. Um, but no, the, the, the way Hale gets used these days is these like really cool hyper offense teams. Um, just unfortunate that due to um, uh, some luck, uh, didn't really get to uh, to, to see it kind of uh, working out in this game. So that's game one. Uh, the second game that I've chosen to look at is uh, something a bit more standard for the tier, uh, and that is a uh, rain offense mirror. So. Although rain teams often look very, very similar, they've very often got Politoed, Ferrothorn, Keldeo, like both of these do. 
they're actually like surprisingly diverse. So they have like three different spinner choices. They can run Tentacruel, they can run Starmie, they can run Excadrill, and all of those play very, very differently. All of those change like the good matchups. All of those pair with like very different offensive Pokemon. Um, oftentimes you'll have like a like a, se a second Steel, like Choice Band Scizor in this case. Um, the, the Ferrothorn item and the Ferrothorn like fourth move slot is like really, really flexible. And then you've also got things like, do I run Thunderous T for like 100% accurate Thunders? Do I run Tornadus? Do I run Gyarados? Do I run even like, you know, Feraligator? There's like loads and loads of cool rain abusers that make this actually like a really diverse team archetype. So what we see here are two actually very different uh, rain teams. Now, kind of the classic example that rain has, although it's very potent going forwards, very potent offensively, is that Defensively, because you are by default stacking like loads of water types together. Um, in this case, Polito, Tentacle, Keldeo, or Politoed, Starmie, Keldeo, depending on which team. You're always going to be like defensively uh, weak to something. Um, and what we see on Lax's team, and what Lax says immediately at team preview in the chat is, uh, Retro, I don't have a electric immunity. Um, one really big weakness is, is Thunderous T. This is like a really common weakness for, for rain teams to have. So most rain teams will try and counteract that by running uh, electric immunities. Um, things like Mamoswine is really popular, Excadrill, uh, Yachi Berry Garchomp is really good into Thunderous T. Uh, what else? Uh, your own Thunderous T it tends to be pretty good into Thunderous T, depending on you know EV spreads and natures and things. Um, there must be more than I'm forgetting. Uh, Landorus T. Yeah, there's loads of like good ground types and electric communities that rain can run in order to try and like, limit how much damage opposing Thunderous can do to you. Um, and those electric communities are also just like good generally. They're good against Volt Switch Rotom. Uh, they're good against uh, Thunder Wave Clefable, Thunder Wave Tyranitar, Thunder Wave whatever, you know, like electric communities and rain tend to just be like really, really good. But Lax's team has chosen to go without, and he's immediately seen the error of his ways of team preview when he realizes, uh, okay, I'm going to have to play absolutely out of my skin if I am going to uh, beat this Thunderous T. That said, from the other perspective, Crystal's also got a headache on um, on their hands too, and the Crystal's team is really weak to Keldeo. So Latios tends to be like a really common Pokemon on rain teams because you tend to be quite bad against like opposing Keldeo and Latios is like the best Keldeo answer in the game. Um, but Crystal has kind of opted to drop the Latios in order to get in a choice band Scizor in order, to, in order to try and like improve other matchups. But this means immediately the matchup into opposing Keldeo is really quite rough. The only option they have against Keldeo is trade with your own Keldeo. Um, maybe it's like a Choppleberry Ferrothorn. That could be an option. Um, to kind of like lure it and power whip it um, or to use Starmie but Starmie's frail Starmie doesn't want to come in on like Choice Bet's Hydro Pump um, Starmie, uh, Starmie uh, often loses to Choice Scarf Keldeo very often so it's going to be like a real swingy game it's going to be who can use their big offensive breaker the best it's going to be Lax's Keldeo up against Crystal's Thunderous whoever gets the most mileage out of their like big breaker is going to go on to win this game it's all about momentum it's all about free turns it's all about um, using your sacks, uh, your, your, your Pokemon sacrifices at the best times um, and just really about preserving momentum. So what we see is both players choose to lead off with their big borderline broken uh, Rain Sweeper, Thunderous up against Keldeo. Now this would immediately tell me, if I was Crystal, uh, this is probably Choice Specs Keldeo because otherwise you probably don't lead that into uh, something like a uh, potential Ferrothorn lead because uh, like a Leftovers or a Scarf Keldeo doesn't do enough damage to, to Ferrothorn. It's a pretty bad lead matchup, honestly. But if your Choice Specs, amazing lead uh, here. And fearing the Choice Specs, uh, Crystal is uh, forced to immediately switch out, go into the Politoed, and that immediately reveals this massive Choice Specs damage of 60% of into the Politoed. Um, unfortunately, uh, Lax then misses this second Hydro. Um, what that means is that uh, with an extra Protect, this Polito goes on to uh, actually be in a position to live the next Hydro Pump uh, and get off a, uh, a Toxic. You can see here it lives with 1% uh, HP. Pretty fortunate. Um, but uh, yeah, 
Kelly doesn't like being poisoned, but this game being very offensive, it's unlikely to be like a real game swinger. So anticipating a pretty forecasted protect, Lax goes into, this, into his own Ferrothorn to get rocks, and one of the second handshakes of Black and White OU is that when one Ferrothorn comes in, the other Ferrothorn tends to come in to, to try and trade hazards. This next turn was really, really big. Okay, uh, I'll just go back slightly. So we see Tornadus come in on the Ferrothorn, knowing that, you know, when two Ferrothorns are against each other, they're just going to click hazards or they're going to switch out. So he knows the, uh, the Torn comes in free because only an, an absolute psychopath would like Thunder Wave or Jarrow Ball on this turn. So the Torn comes in as the rocks come up. So he's immediately got Torn in at 100%. He's got it in before Stealth Rock. That's really, really important. Um, and now there's a bit of a headache. So because Torn came in before Stealth Rock, he's got the advantage of being able, being able to um, bluff his item choice. So Tornadoes can run several different items. It can be Choice Specs, which is like its big breaker set. Now, knowing the Keldeo is Choice Specs, very unlikely the Tornadoes is Choice Specs also, but it, it could be. Um, it could be Choice Scarf, which is a, um, a more recent development. Um, it's a Scarf that beats Volcrona, that outspeeds Opposing Latios, that outspeeds Alakazam. It's kind of an interesting option. Um, or it could be Sub Protect with leftovers in order to, tr to try and like rack up skull damage and rack up toxic damage and like pp stall like these low pp moves like hydro pump and draco meteor and stone edge because uh, tornadoes has prankster so it gets this um priority sub and then protect you just always move first just burn pp down and and rack up um residual damage now that set has to run leftovers and because tornadoes came in before rocks went up Crystal has no idea if this is a leftovers or a choice Tornadus, and that puts them in a really difficult position now because they can't really afford to lose the Ferrothorn. Um, so the obvious play is to, well, get rid of your uh, your very weak Politoed that's not doing anything, but, well, if it's Substitute Tornadus, you've just given away completely free momentum. Um, and yeah, this now becomes a two-for-one situation. So easy KO on the Politoed. Because rocks are up on Crystal's side, because Lax has played slightly more aggressively in the in the early uh, early turns to get rocks up, um, this means that Thunderous can't really come in to respond to this Tornadus. Um, and this is a really good example of how just playing aggressively and taking advantage of like the um, uh, the limitations of the, the very small limitations of some of the best offensive Pokemon in Black and White, you can you can limit how much they're able to uh, to really do against you. Um, and here, just by getting rocks and using this, uh, this tornado set and clicking the right moves and just really taking the game by the horns, um, this thunderous immediately is like, I, how do I, how do I, how do I get the thunderous in? Um, and the way Crystal has to go here is to use the Starmie, get rid of the uh, stealth rock so that he can use the uh, thunderous later. But all of this is just playing into a a choice specs Keldeo end game. Remember, Starmie is the only real Pokemon on Crystal's team that can stand up and like revenge kill uh, Keldeo reliably. So, all that's happening here is just, okay, Thunderous comes in now, but it has to be used defensively. It's borderline be used as like a Zapdos here to like wall this Tornadus. Has to be used to force out the Tornadus. Isn't really getting like set of opportunities. Um, and this Keldeo in the back is just waiting to revenge kill it and just uh, go to town against a team that's now not really got Keldeo counterplay. Um, we see an interesting route being taken right here. So. Uh, Lax takes a bit of a risk here and analyzes the way Crystal's playing, analyzes the team, analyzes some like recent uh, metagame trends and makes a really smart decision, I think, and goes, um, okay, I don't think this Thunderous has agility because it maybe would have clicked it already. Um, and instead makes a decision to go, okay, Keldeo is always in the back to revenge kill this Thunderous. Latios is always in the back to revenge kill this, this Thunderous. What I don't want to happen is force the Thunderous out and have it come back in again really, really healthy and do some big damage to me. Um, so he makes a really good play, and instead of just revenge killing this straight away, he actually chooses to go to a Ferrothorn and get the Stealth Rock up now, knowing that they're now up permanently with no Rapid Spin on Crystal's side. Uh, so the Thunderous takes down Ferrothorn. Um, it you know makes a bit of a dent in Lax's team, but now the Keldeo comes in. The Keldeo gets basically free click of move, chooses to go for a Choice Spec Scold here, um, as the Ferrothorn comes in, so kind of, you know, well read by Crystal. Um, but again, this doesn't really matter because now rocks are up. Um, Crystal's big breaker can't do a huge amount. Um, the Thunderous is, uh, you know, really nerfed. So 
Keldeo comes back in. Uh, it can now switch move to go for a choice specs uh, secret sword. Um, and again, Stealth Rock plus this choice spec secret sword is really cutting into how much damage this Thunderous can do um, as it's uh, able to revenge kill the Keldeo. From here, the game is kind of wrapped. Um, and the reason for that is that Tornadius comes in. Uh, the Thunderous has been uh, taken so low because it's been forced to be used defensively into Keldeo. It's been forced to take a hurricane earlier in the game that now this Tornadus just removes it with a hurricane um, immediately on this turn. And now we get to kind of see the benefit of um, subprotect Tornadus and really how it works. So this Keldeo, based on the other sets here, I would probably assume this was a nasty plot Thunderous supporting a, a choice Scarf Keldeo. And you know, Scarf uh, Keldeo can revenge kill Tornadus, right? If this was like a Specs Tornadus, it just comes in the Hydro Pumps here. And then this Scizor in the back is going to beat the Latios. So this was like a choice to Tornadus, like game's done. But what's interesting is this um, sub-protect uh, Tornadus is actually able to just wait. Wait around, just wait for a, a Hydro Pump miss uh, from the Keldeo. Even if the Keldeo never missed, it can just wait for a... Uh, um, for it to run out of PP, for it to use all eight of its PP. Um, but kind of fortunately for Falax, it does actually just miss a quite, an, uh, quite an early Hydro Pump. Um, and yeah, this Sizzle ends up not being Choice Band in the end, ends up being... Um, Citrus Berry, kind of weirdly, I guess that makes it a bit better into um, some things like uh, Alakazam or uh, or something else. Um, but yeah, because it's not Choice Ban, it's not even got the power in the end to, to kind of blow through this team when this, this Tornado ends up ends up winning with the Latios not even getting used. So this was a really fast-paced rain game against two teams that were really quite weak against each other. So Crystal Thunderous was an absolutely massive threat uh, alongside Lax's choice specs Keldeo also being a huge threat what decided this game was who took the game early on by um, by like the, by, the, by the scruff of his neck who who led the best who controlled the hazard game best um, and ultimately it was it was Lax that did that and I think this is a really good example of a game that kind of explains how how people talk about black and white being like a, a broken checks, broken meta game, okay? Where you have things like, you know, our Keldeo is really overpowered, but it loses to Latios, and Latios is like 50% usage, so Keldeo can never really be that good, okay? And Thunderous is really overpowered, but Thunderous is quite slow compared to the other wall breakers in the tier, so it's never really going to take like six KOs a game. Um, or like Alakazam is broken, but it's so frail, and various Scarpers beat it. Like, the, 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 there's all these things where. The other broken Pokemon check the other broken Pokemon in some way. And this is a really good example of, of that. So here, Lax was able to use speed control with Tornadus and Keldeo to beat a very overpowered thunderous threat. Um, well, not overpowered, but a very scary thunderous threat. And also, he's able to force that thunderous to be used in a defensive way. You know, to take Secret Sword, to take Hurricanes, which means that it doesn't really get a chance to actually... Um, to win uh, in the end. Uh, so those are the two games I've chosen to analyze today. This really interesting uh, hail build in the first game that is kind of becoming quite an iconic uh, aspect of, of high profits and black and white in 2024. And then this really kind of interesting um, sack war, who positions best, uh, who's better, Thunderous or Keldeo uh, game uh, in game two between Lax and Crystal. Um, that's all I've got for you today. I may come back in later weeks to analyze some more games, but uh, if I don't, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, to um, commentate here, and I, I may see you all again in the future. Um, see ya.